This is my second video update from Nicosia, Cyprus on this Wednesday late afternoon, early evening. And I just finished uploading a couple of videos, one on, uh, on my channel, another one on Alexandra's channel. I've got a video going up on the Duran soon. And as I was uh, doing my editing work at a cafe down the street here, we got the news on the, uh, the two drone strikes at the Kremlin, hitting the Kremlin, which the Russian government has now said was a terrorist attack and an assassination attempt on Russian President Vladimir Putin. And this is huge news. The interesting part about the videos that are now all over the interwebs showing the two drones hitting the Kremlin, of which the Kremlin spokesman Peskov said minimal to very, very little to no damage was done to the Kremlin and that the Russian president was not even at the Kremlin when the drones hit. Um, the interesting part was that this drone strike was yesterday evening and we're just now getting the the news about this this attempted uh, assassination against russian president vladimir putin now you'll remember a couple of weeks ago maybe even a week ago we had a couple of drones trying to to hit moscow and one drone according to i believe built they reported that the the ukraine government they tried to assassinate Vladimir Putin while he was uh, or he was supposed to attend some sort of uh, of an industrial park and the Ukraine uh, SBU I believe it was the SBU or the Intel services um, they they sent out a drone to try and hit this industrial park in order to to assassinate the the Russian president this was reported on by build if I'm not mistaken I talked about this in a video a couple of days ago. Anyway, we've had a, a bunch of drones trying to to uh, to hit Moscow, and we had the report of a drone a drone attempt a couple of days ago trying to to take out the Russian president. And here we are today or yesterday evening with two drones hitting the Kremlin in what the Russian government is calling an assassination attempt on Russian president. Let's go this way on Russian President Vladimir Putin. So who who did this? Who who was behind this? Well, there are a lot of different theories and analysis about who gave the okay to to launch a drone into the uh, into the Kremlin, two drones that hit the Kremlin 16 minutes apart to be more precise. There are some analysts, I would say, from the Ukraine side of things that claim that this is a Russian false flag and they're going to use this as an excuse to go after Alensky. That is what many Ukraine uh, Telegram and Twitter accounts are, are claiming. We have uh, many analysts who are saying that this was the Alensky regime behind this, like Alensky himself. And, that's why Alensky bolted to Finland, which is interesting that Alensky is in Finland at this time. And uh, there are other uh, theories, analysis, which claim that this was an act from the Alensky government, but probably some actors like, like uh, the SBU or Intel officers like Budanov or, uh, or these types of characters. So Alensky may not be in the know. This was very high up in the Alensky government, but maybe this was Danilov or Badanov or someone like that. And Alensky was, was kind of kept out of the loop. There are people that are claiming these are the guys behind this. And uh, I'm trying to think, what, what else did I read about, uh, about these attacks? Ah, there are some people that claim that these are saboteurs pro-Ukraine saboteurs who are actually in in Russia, in Moscow, because 
there are a lot of uh, analysts who claim that the drones, there's no way that the drones could have, could have made it all the way from Ukraine to hit, uh, to hit Moscow, to hit Red Square, the Kremlin. There are people that are saying this had to have been launched from somewhere inside of Russia or close to Moscow or something like that. So there's, and I'm probably missing some of the other uh, theories or analysis about who or what was behind this drone strike. But you know, it doesn't really matter because the Russian government and the Kremlin, they have come out and they have said that this is a terrorist act and this is an attempted assassination on the president of the Russian Federation and that's what matters. And, uh, and the big question now is what's gonna be the retaliation, if any? Is a retaliation from Russia going to come right away? Is it going to is it going to come later? If there is a retaliation, will it be later on, or what exactly will Russia do? A lot of uh, analysts are speculating that Russia is going to now go after Alensky and they're going to try to take out Alensky. I don't think so. I, I think if the Russians wanted to take out Alensky, they would have taken him out a long, long time ago. The the Russian government, I think, they're perfectly happy with Alensky. Right where we're at, right there where he is because he's he's a clown puppet actor and the guy's completely incompetent and I think they're they're perfectly fine with Olensky being uh, being the president at this time as this conflict is uh, is going on because if you if you get rid of Olensky you may actually get someone as president of Ukraine who is actually competent and so I think they're fine with with Olensky as, as president. And if they wanted to get rid of Olensky, they would have gotten rid of Olensky a long, long time ago. I mean, you know, the Russians, they, they, allow, they allow people to travel in and out of Kiev. They allow Olensky to travel outside of Kiev. I mean, he was in, wasn't he in Germany? And he goes to Poland often, I imagine. And, you know, he, he bolted to Finland and the Russians didn't, didn't do anything. You know that for Olensky to travel to Finland, he got Russia's okay. I guarantee you that Russia gave Alensky the okay to travel to Finland. 100% guaranteed. Alensky doesn't leave Kiev unless he gets the okay from Russia. The Russians are fine with Alensky in power because the guy's a fool. He's a clown. And the risk is, is that if you get rid of Alensky, you might get someone who's actually competent. So. I don't think it's going to be a retaliation against Alensky per se. I think the Russians will retaliate because I think there are hardline elements that already have issued statements, hardline elements in the Russian government, in the parliament, and they have come out with statements saying that Russia needs to, needs to respond. And so I think the Russian military will have to retaliate. I don't know in what form, but I will tell you this. The Russia will respond. They will retaliate with with useful strikes, like militarily strategic, useful strikes, because hitting the Kremlin with these two drones makes zero military sense. It doesn't, it doesn't help Ukraine one bit from a military perspective, not one bit. It doesn't help them in this conflict with Russia. So I think that when Russia does retaliate, it will retaliate by hitting, it will retaliate by hitting uh, ammunition, uh, warehouses, uh, oil depots, logistics, command centers, stuff like that. Stuff that actually makes military sense and logic. So a retaliation will come. I believe it will come. I think Russia's going to have to retaliate to some degree, and it's going to probably be a retaliation where where they hit various strategic targets. Most likely they'll just uh, hit targets that, that will degrade and hamper Ukraine's big spring counteroffensive, which by the way, from what I understand, the counteroffensive is, is already started or it will be starting any day now. Actually, Wagner's Prigozhin came out with a statement saying that the big counteroffensive has already started. We are getting reports, actually, this one via RT, claiming that the Ukraine military has stationed 4,000 troops in Odessa and 
what they're planning to do is to send these troops towards Transnistria so that they can open up a front in Transnistria. Maybe, maybe this is connected to this big warehouse, this cache of weapons. But uh, from RT, a source that RT has, is claiming that these 4,000 troops in Odessa will move towards Transnistria and open a front there. So there are a lot of reports saying that the big counteroffensive has started, is about to start, and it is going to be some sort of, of big, like, D-Day spectacle, like a big, big offensive, something along the lines of D-Day, where Ukraine is just going to, to hit towards Zaporozhye and Kherson and Transnistria and maybe even Belgorod in the north and just try to cause a whole lot of, of panic and try to cause uh, a, so, a sort of collapse in, uh, in the Kremlin and then they can get their, their regime changed, something like that, some big shock and awe panic. But um, the, uh, the drone strike, the drone strike on the Kremlin, we're going to have to wait and see what, uh, what the Russian government and the Russian military does in, uh, in what, form of, uh, what form of a retaliation will we get? Let me know in the comments down below what you think the Russian military is going to do and what the Russian government is going to do. Uh, I can definitely say that they are not going to, to act irrational or emotional about this. They're not just going to, to do something that's, that's out, of, uh, out of line with the way the Russians have been, have been going about this conflict so far, which has been a very a very step-by-step, -step, uh, gradual approach, which, uh, which has been focused on, on the primary goals of this conflict, which is mainly the demilitarization of, uh, of Ukraine and of NATO and the collective West. So whatever Russia does, I don't think it's going to be something that's, that's out of the ordinary or out of line with the way Russia has been going about this conflict today and it's definitely not going to be some sort of a, of an emotional type of type of retaliation so that's that's the big news that is the big news i'm trying to think if there is anything else connected to this uh to this drone attack on the Kremlin, this was a very, very stupid thing. Whoever was behind this, this was very, very stupid. And I understand what they're trying to do. They're trying to cause panic. They're, they're uh, derailing trains in, uh, in uh, Bryansk in Russia. They're, uh, they're trying to send drones into Moscow from last week. They now got two drones to hit the Kremlin. They're sending missiles and drones into Crimea. They are trying to cause a type of panic. I understand the general thinking from the collective West and from the Alensky regime, but uh, this, this really does not make much military sense. But maybe if you put it in the context of trying to cause enough panic so that you could get a collapse in the Putin government, maybe that's, maybe this makes kind of sense if that's your ultimate objective. And that is the ultimate objective of the counteroffensive. It's not really about winning the conflict. It's about creating enough panic so that you can, uh, you can force some type of change in leadership in Russia. That's really the purpose of the counteroffensive. I think everyone in the collective West, or at least most people in the collective West, understand that uh, Ukraine cannot defeat Russia on a military level, and so they're throwing this this counteroffensive Hail Mary, and they're they're uh, they're sprinkling on top of this Hail Mary, they're sprinkling some some sabotage and drone strikes and other things to to kind of build up the the panic level in in Russia and maybe in in the halls of of the Kremlin, so that you can get some sort of palace intrigue event or 
or something like that. This was a very, very, in my opinion, this was a very, very stupid move. And uh, I, the video that I did this morning, I talked about how Reznikov was, uh, was saying that there's going to be a big, a big attack on Russia. Reznikov said that, uh, that Ukraine would, would hit um, nuclear power plants or hydroelectric power plants and stuff like that. And uh, 24 hours after Reznikov makes that statement, we get these, these drone strikes. And Reznikov's statement was talking about how there would be a big attack inside of Russia, which would force the Russian government to, to call it quits with, with Project Ukraine. That was uh, what Reznikov was saying. And that video, I put it up this morning, and now you have these events. So anyway, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to end the video there, and let's wait and see what more information we have connected to this, uh, this drone strike on the Kremlin. Once again, a very, very, uh, in my opinion, a very dumb move. I wonder if, uh, if there were people in the, the collective West governments, like Sullivan or Newlands or people like that, who knew that this was going to, to happen. There are reports claiming that I believe Sullivan and Burns, Mr. Burns and Sullivan are planning to visit Kiev in the next week. And I believe that Alensky is planning to go to Berlin next week. And there are many analysts who say that when Alensky returns from Berlin, he's going to officially announce the, the big counter offensive, something like that. But for right now, Alensky is hiding out in Helsinki. Hiding in Helsinki, that is where Alensky is at. And actually there are reports claiming that Alensky was going to leave today he was going to leave Helsinki today, but now he has decided to hang out in Helsinki a little longer. I don't know. Maybe he's going to take uh, Dancing Queen Santa Marin out for some drinks and, and dinner or something like that. Who knows? Anyway, everybody, I'm going to end this video. I'm going to end it. Yeah, I'll end it here. I am at this outdoor coffee shop, and I think I will grab something to eat and edit this video and get it up. Do I have anything else to say now? The Duran.locals.com, Duran shop, 10% off. Use the code good day. Take care.